But we get intolerant, and there are some do-gooders in Washington that believe, and they've told me personally, I'll ask you, why are you passing this piece of legislation telling individuals on some consumer protection thing? They say, they literally said, well, the people are too, do, it's too stupid. We have to do it. We have to take care of them. They believe that. But there are others that think that if you had the right to put anything into your body or into your lungs, that you will immediately become a heroin addict. <laughs> and, uh, you, you know, it, it is no trust and confidence. I think the best way to think about this is there's still a relative uh, understanding of the First Amendment, even though that is being eroded lately. But there's a relative understanding that the First Amendment allows people to say unpopular things. They can preach unpopular doctrines. They can talk about socialism and everything else in a free society. But, um, but, but in the, when it comes to personal behavior, nobody wants to apply those same rules. But to be tolerant. To be tolerant of people making choices is different than tolerating and endorsing what they do. And you say, well, the world's all messed up. We don't want people doing these dead bad things. Well, fine. You have a lot of responsibility. Just think, if everybody took responsibility for themselves and did the right thing, the world would be a better place. Woo! But then... But then you might have uh, responsibility of parents and family and friends and neighbors and churches to improve society. But once you turn it over to the government, believe me, it is bad news for us. It's an undermining of liberty. Every time they want to make it a fairer economic society, they have to do it with the use of violence. Some people who are strongly anti-war love the welfare state and they don't see that they're using the same violence. The violence of the war is the violence of the welfare state because they're taking by force from people from th things that they are that rightfully somebody else's and giving them to somebody else. Now, the one argument that some make on this is a legitimate argument because free markets and capitalism today is not well understood. We don't have free market capitalists. We That's have, right, Ron! We have, we have too many corporations and banks who benefit through the military-industrial complex and the bailouts and the monetary system, so we don't want to be trapped into defending them. What we want to defend is freedom of choice, and we don't want to. We don't have to be against wealth. Wealth creation in a free society is done by allowing the consumer to vote. The vote in a free society is done every time a consumer buys something. If you don't like the product, you just boycott it. You don't buy it. Often, often wonder about uh, if we ever applied the principles of the cell phone. Cell phones fascinate me. Fascinate me because in spite of the horrors of big government, cell phones are rather prevalent. Have you noticed? Sometimes people buy one every year. Sometimes they have two or three. Technology is always changing. Can you imagine if uh, the Department of Homeland Security 20 years ago had been given the assignment to make sure everybody in America has a good cell phone? I mean, what would have happened if it had one company make it? It probably would have been junk, and it just wouldn't have worked. But today, it's spread around. The cell phone philosophy is the philosophy, guess what? We ought to use that for the distribution of services like medical care. Right! Yeah. Woo! Free competition in medical services would be great. There wouldn't be the licensing that causes monopolies. We wouldn't have the government subsidizing insurance company. With all this uh, fanfare with Obamacare, guess who came out all right? Drug companies and insurance companies came out. So the corporations still came out regardless of which, which administration. But in a free society, you have to provide services. You're not handicapped by, uh, by uh, licensing and restrictions. Today, everything is licensed and restrict, restricted and, 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 and uh, planned by, by the federal government. But guess where you are, uh, you know, where you might do something on your own to take care of yourself and you're not allowed, you're prohibited. Frequently in holistic and voluntary natural health cures, the government always wants to put roadblocks in your way. They want to regulate the vitamins company, the nutrition companies. Not only do they want to do it at the national level, they want to do it at the international level. Once again, freedom of choice is the answer. 
You know, if we can understand that the freedom of choice in, in intellectually, what you can read, if we, we recognize it in our church and our faith and our beliefs, and that's supposed to be related to our eternity and our, our, our faith and our beliefs, if we can allow people to make those decisions, why in the world can't we say people can make up their own mind about what they want to do with their own body, whether it's medical or whatever? Now why, why should we continue the struggle for, uh, for liberty? I'm not optimistic about uh, in a year or two things are going to uh, work out you know, where everything's going to be just fixed up again. But I think things will get a lot worse. I think there will be a collapse of the currency and we should be prepared. And the strongest preparation is to understand what kind of government we want, the nature of government. We have to know what kind of a government we want. What, what should the role of government be? Should the role of government be what it's been for 100 years? I would say no, it's totally failed. The role of government, the founders had a good lead on this. The role of government ought to be to protect our liberties. That's the purpose. Yeah. But in order to do that, and the time will come and we'll have more opportunity, we have to shrug off the shackles of big government. We have to just get rid of them, whether at the TSA or the IRS or the Federal Reserve. We don't need it and they're damaging to us and uh, opportunities will come. The Soviet system collapsed without a war. Magnificent. I was in the military in the 60s at the height of the Cold War and believe me, uh, it was during the Cuban crisis I was called in. And those were rather different times and they were dangerous. But guess what? We didn't have to fight them. They collapsed because of a ridiculous economic system. And ours is not a heck of a lot better right now. We're less authoritarian, but we're becoming more authoritarian. We're ignoring the rule of law, but economically it's foolhardy. And if we ever accept this idea that uh, war can stop you know, the or stop the recession and help us along, we're in big trouble. One principle, though, that we really must challenge if you want to see a difference in foreign policy, the attitude that it is now permissible to have preventive war. Preventive war is aggression. America is not about aggression. Today, people are starting to get worried about China. Uh, Bernanke, today and yesterday, have been complaining they want to blame China for everything because uh, China's uh, uh, currency is, uh, is too weak, you know, and uh, they want to make it stronger. So we, they want to blame China, but, and they won't look upon ourselves. But guess what? China happens to be a country where they work, they produce products, they save their money, they invest their money, they buy up oil wells and mineral rights around the world, they loan us money. It sounds like they've caught the capitalist bug and we're, we have this dependency on them. So I don't think this, this is going to work and in, 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 in due time this will have to change. I think it will come about, I think we will have the crisis, it doesn't have to be violent. We preach change but not with violence. I think civil disobedience is great to practice. But ultimately, it's only the attitudes that count. Study and understand Austrian economics, what civil liberty is all about. But most of all, we have to convince the masses of people, they, get, they have to be convinced that their best interests are served by believing in freedom. Up until now, people believe that my best interest is served by the dependency on government. They will always be able to rob somebody and give me some money. So they capitulate and they say, if we get some food stamps, we'll endorse this system of government granting favors. But guess what? The food stamps dribble out to the poor and the big food stamps go to Wall Street and the bankers and the tune of trillions of dollars in secrecy. But if we have a, the free society allows us to pursue our goals of virtue and excellence. That is what makes civilization. It's individuals who want to pursue excellence and virtue in a private sort of way. When governments claim they know what is virtuous and only the government can tell us and spell it out, believe me, 
They do do it. They are not virtuous. They want power and authority, and they want to dominate, and they want to dictate, and they want us to be servants and uh, and respond to everything that they want. They want us to work hard so they can raise our taxes. The spirit is alive and well. Alive and well. It's better now than it has been a long time. Three years ago. I could not get very many people to think about the Federal Reserve. Today, every once in a while, people will get together and they'll start saying, end the Fed, you know. And, uh, so, in addition to ending the Fed and the IRS and all the rest, restore our liberties. If we restore our liberties, all will be well. That should be our goal. We have an opportunity. Let's pursue it. Thank you very much. Yeah! Isn't that great? Yeah. Every time we hear Ron Paul, we learn something else. It's wonderful on the ASU campus of education that we have the opportunity to listen to such a renowned and leader of the freedom movement and liberty. Now, Ron Paul is going to be here. Uh, he's doing a little interv interview in the back. But if you want to shake his hand, get a book, get his sign, we line up over here in front of those tents. I know Ron would love to have a chance to